It's Coach Zach, head coach here at 24-7 Hockey. So I want to talk about what Wings options are in transitions on the regroup so that you can put yourself in the best position possible to get into that offensive line rush situation and make more plays going into the offensive zone. So we're going to break down three options right now. Option one, post. So in this option, as a wing, as you're coming back into the play, you're gonna post up here and be that first option for the defenseman. Same thing with this wing. If you're gonna post, you're coming back here and posting up so that they go D to D, that you're an option right here. Now part of the key here, when you post, is you hustle back. If you come back full speed, you're gonna be able to come back a little bit lower, be an easy option, and you're gonna be able to make either a tight turn here or stop, get your stick open, and be able to see the play. What happens is players get lazy, and you start coasting back here, and when you get that puck, you're skating this way. Now, what do you got? You don't have options, and then you start skating it back into the zone and making bad plays. All right, if you hustle back, you can stop or do a quick tight turn here, get your feet up ice, so now when you get that puck, you're gonna be able to see the ice better, and you can see what's going on. So if this defenseman pinches on you, you can bounce that puck and skate around, or your forward can pick it up and you're already moving this way. You can actually skate it because your feet are going up ice. You can get the puck, you can take two or three hard strides, and you can gain the zone here. So move back, hustle. If you're gonna post, hustle back. Even if you're on the weak side, hustle back so that you can post up and you can get your feet going in the right direction with either stopping and getting your stick here, giving them a good target, or a really quick tight turn and then delay, delay, delay till you get that puck. Don't start taking off here so the defenseman has to fire the puck up your butt, all right? If you do a quick turn, you gotta hold off and delay, hold that passing lane, find that passing lane, give the D a good target with your stick, all right? So that's how you post properly to be able to make more plays. Two, swing. So again, depending on what your team's regroup is, depending on what your team kind of has in place for a system, there's a couple ways that you can swing, but again, if your team incorporates the swing, I wanna help you how you can do it most effectively, right? So one great way that you can swing is that typically you're gonna be doing this in a D2D situation, all right? But some teams may automatically swing this wing with the center automatically. As soon as this, uh, as soon as the D goes back in for a regroup. But a couple reasons why the swing can be effective. If they go to D to D here and you swing down low, all right, they can either hit you here for a quick play, or they can wait till you turn up and you, they can hit you here. Now make sure if you're swinging all the way across the ice here that you're, if they go D to D, that you're actually coming down low enough here for. Uh, this to be a good passing angle. You want to create a good passing angle for that defenseman. So don't swing here and then start going up ice and wondering why you're not getting the puck. All right, you have to create that good passing angle for that defenseman so they have a good target to hit. Another great way to swing. If they go D to D again and you're posted up here, you can swing with that center. Again, this has to be a pre-planned, but you can swing with that center so now again, they've got a better passing angle to hit you at, all right? So you can swing here, you can come straight across here and be a passing angle right there, but the key is, again, to make sure that you're delaying and this D has their head up and they're actually looking so that you don't get ahead of the play, all right, and you're way past, and at that point they have no passing lane. You have to be able to time it so that you're in a good passing lane, and that may be you have to hustle and you have to anticipate and go quick, or it also may be that you have to delay, and that's the difference between a dumb hockey player and a smart hockey player is a smart hockey player is gonna know how to work hard and how to hustle, but also how to time it and delay and go at the right time so that this defenseman has the best passing angle possible and you're able to find that gap. Again, when you're using the swing play, make sure that you and the center are on the same page and you guys are swinging. So they're swinging this way and filling this lane, you're swinging this way. Don't just automatically swing and run into the center. Make sure it's either part of your team system and strategy in the regroup, or if you don't have a team system and a team strategy, you're communicating, the center and the wings here are communicating and so that you guys understand exactly what you should be doing. It's the same thing that happens sometimes with the weak side wing. So if the puck's here, sometimes 
this weak side, this center will swing to the weak side and that weak side wing will come through the middle and be an option here. It just really depends on what the strategy is and what you want to accomplish in the regroup. Some teams will have this preset, but these are just some options to think about when you're actually doing that, if that's part of your team strategy or if it's not part of your team strategy, something that you may be able to add and communicate as a line. Three is stretch. Now I love this option and it's an option that if you use it properly, it can be very effective, right? So stretch plays happen a couple of different ways. One, if you go D to D here, this winger can leave early. So instead of standing here for this cross ice pass, which a lot of times isn't gonna happen, you can take off up and then turn along that blue line and so you can be an option here. Okay, or check this out, right? What happens is if he moves it to this wing here, all right, and this wing ends up skating and gets pressure and bounces it off, if that center doesn't come through and pick it up, you can come through and pick it up. Or if the center comes through and picks it up, now you can cut up here. And a lot of times you can get behind this defenseman here, okay, and get that rush and you can get a two on one or even a breakaway, all right? So again, it has to be timed. It has to be something that's part of your team system. Your coach isn't gonna snap on you if you do something like this. But honestly, any coach that doesn't like you to lead the play and get involved in the offensive rush and just hang out on the weak side of the ice, you know, really doesn't know what they're talking about. Obviously, some coaches might have their own system, that's fine, but you see players in the NHL using this all the time because it's extremely effective. Some of the best players like Connor McDavid use this all the time as well. It's gotta be done responsibly though. You can't just take off when you're the first option here. You gotta make sure that the defensemen have options. So you're coming back hard, you're posting up, you're being a good option. If they go D to D here and they're gonna go up to the wing, then you can take off. You gotta be able to read that they have options before you leave your post. Just like any situation, you gotta be accountable for what your number one job is, which is being a first option and breakout pass here. And then once you're accountable for that, if the play changes, you can adjust. So that's a great stretch. Another good option for a stretch. If the puck goes back in a regroup, right? And you were way down here battling and you're coming back, you're not gonna get back here in time to be a regroup option. So instead of trying to hustle back, you can kind of delay a little bit, let these defensemen get ahead of you, and then cheat here and see if you maybe can't catch a stretch pass here because you're not gonna be able to get back in time anyways. So come back, still come back hard, but instead of coming all the way back and the play goes, and then you're still going this way and you gotta turn and come back, see if you can't find a gap. Again, this is some of those things that shouldn't be used all the time. It's a once in a while kind of thing when the opportunity presents itself, but it's one of those things you gotta be a little bit savvy, you gotta be a little bit smart, you gotta be a little bit deceptive so you can get caught up a little bit down here if that defenseman loses track of you okay find this passing lane make sure they you make eye contact you're yelling for it you're communicating all right so those are three great options when it comes to wingers regrouping and what your options are to get involved in the play if you want a checklist okay so i put together even more options for you what you should be reading what you should be looking at what your goals are on the regroup for wings i've included that in the description of this video so you can go to the description of the video or the first comment below and i've got a free checklist for you that you can access and download that's going to give you step by step what you should be looking for as a wing when it comes to those regroups even more than we were able to cover in this video if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, get subscribed, turn on those notifications, hit the little bell so you get notified every time we release a new video. Do that right now if you're not subscribed. Get subscribed. Leave me a comment below. Let me know, do you like these whiteboard videos? This is a new style. So I wanna know if you like these whiteboard videos and if you do, let me know what, your, what topic you want me to cover. So let me know in the comments below if you like the whiteboard videos and what topic you want me to cover next.